Hole 10, Marne, the 441-yard par 4. This is the toughest hole on the course, particularly into the prevailing west wind. The two fairway bunkers on the right side are probably just out of reach, which makes the fairway quite wide. The ball is likely to run more down the higher left side of the fairway. A ditch runs in across the front of the green, just a couple of paces short. Laying up tends to be the sensible option leaving yourself a putt for par. Beware of your layup as the ditch encroaches from the left. If you feel you can carry the water, make sure you can carry at least eight yards onto the green as the ditch moves diagonally up the right side. The green has a ridge at the back where it narrows. Be careful of the gorse to the right and at the back of the green. Respect this tough hole. Hole 11, Colts, the 544-yard par 5. Bunkers are in range off the tee on both sides of this soft dogleg right. It is likely to be a three-shotter back into the wind, so if you like, hit short of the traps from the tee and lay up short of the cross bunkers with your second shot. If you can carry the cross bunkers on the right, the ball tends to run towards the green. There is a severe trap guarding the front right of this green. A ditch runs along the left side of the green, left of the bunker. The putting surface has a general slope from back to front and from right to left. There is a ridge that divides the green. Pay attention to where you want to land and finish by the green to increase your chances of par. Like all of the par fives at Royal Dublin, it is a strategic hole. Hole 12, Campbell's, the 185-yard par 3. The last of the short holes is by no means the least. There is a ditch about 60 yards short of the green and dead ground between it and the front. Therefore, be aware of your distance. The sloping putting surface has a narrow entrance. If you are struggling to see a shot here, front right of the green is a good target increasing your chances of an up and down. The bunkers right are slightly easier to get up and down from relative to the difficulty that the steep front left track presents. Hole 13 Dardanelles, the 432 yard par four. When you look down the fairway off this tee, you see mounds left on what looks like a narrow target on the right side. Try to ignore the first mound on the left as your ball should kick down off it. Visualize a bigger hitting zone than you actually see. The second mound can cause some difficulty for your approach, so you may consider staying short of it. The long narrow green is further away than it may appear due to a mound short right of it. Although your instinct may be to avoid the right mound, Two bunkers guard the left side well. There is a chance of your ball gathering from either side if you land your approach shot far enough up the green. Try to hit your approach past the pin and take the tricky front out of play. Hole 14 Morins, the 545 yard par 5. The last of the long holes is again likely to take three shots to get to the green. It is the second of only three mildly blind tee shots on the course. The tall flagpole to the right of the clubhouse is the middle of the fairway. There are punishing bunkers not visible to the right off the tee 
and a gathering trap in the landing zone on the left. A ditch runs across the fairway about 50 yards short of the green. There is a deep and very well placed bunker at the 100 yard mark on the right. Two traps frame the layup area to the left side about 80 yards from the front of the green. You need to decide what you want to achieve with your layup, choose carefully. The green runs quite steeply from back to front, so best to keep short of the pin. The gorse back and left comes into play if you are aggressive. The two bunkers right and one left are tough to get close from. This green has a generous flat front which will leave you an uphill putter chip. Hole 16, Dolly, the 285 yard par 4. This short par 4 can be drivable. Manage your expectation here. You may feel like you should make a 3 when 4 is very acceptable. If you think you can reach the green or at least carry the cross bunkers, then it is worth having a go off the tee. If not, be sensible and lay up short of the first cross trap. As you can see, the green area is a minefield of bunkers. It also runs off steeply either side. There is a severe slope from back to front and gently from left to right. This clever short par 4 demands clear strategy and decision making. Hole 17 Coast Guards the 422 yard par 4. The right half of the fairway on the second last hole is blind from the tee. Your gauge is the second left trap. There is a shorter trap on the right with the ditch running parallel to that side of the fairway. If you can carry this trap, your line is a lot further right than it may appear. If you don't feel you can reach the green in two, Consider laying up short of the two greenside right traps and plan your angle to the pin. This subtly undulating putting surface runs away on both sides. There is a narrow entrance to it. Missing past the bunker's right is easier than getting up and down from the left side. The back of the green is very narrow. For the last time I'll say it, the middle of the green is your target. Hole 18 Garden The 463 yard final hole. This unique final hole is one to brace yourself for. The area right, the garden, is actually out of bounds. So you need to get your second shot airborne to carry it. The safe option from the tee is to play short of the fairway traps and leave yourself as close to the right side as you can in order to shorten your approach. You may consider this as a three shot hole off the tee, hitting straight down the fairway in two and then across to the green. As the ditch runs alongside the green, you need to have plenty of club for your approach. It's all carry. The sensible way to play it is to aim well down the left side towards the green side trap. Treat this final signature hole at Royal Dublin with respect in order to complete your Bull Island Lynx experience with happy thoughts. <laughs>